Join the resistance. Greetings, everyone. This is Chuck Blackman with Resistance Radio TV. I hope you all safely enjoyed your Memorial Day. I hope you spent it celebrating how awesome and great and free the United States of America used to be. Because as of 2013, the United States makes up less than 5% of the world's population, yet it houses 22% of the world's inmates, making it the number one in incarceration on the world stage. But almost one out of every 100 Americans are incarcerated at any given point in time, myself included, occasionally. Wouldn't it be great if the aliens were here to set us free? There has been some wicked, nasty, blatantly obvious alien activity going down on planet Earth recently. At the same time, YouTube is cracking down on the real UFO alien truth channels, like this one. It's already happened to some of the bigger channels, like one of my favorites, Secure Team 10, has been completely demonetized. Tyler and Secure Team 10 have been around for over seven years and have a loyal fan base of over two million subscribers. Yet, they report on the truth behind this and related phenomenon. Those of us who report on the actual truth about the UFO phenomenon seem to be under fire. One of YouTube's highest grossing UFO channels just aired a 45 minute report on a surface battle between US Navy Space Forces and werewolves on the moon. Werewolves. The secret government alien agenda is a serious topic and the shape of its course of events is extremely detrimental to the future of mankind. And though I do try to make my videos entertaining, I do not produce entertainment. I report on the truth. Uh, good, bad, or ugly, that's what I report. We real truth hunters work extremely hard researching, reporting, and producing content that reflects the actual state of these strange and deadly phenomena. Uh, we shouldn't be profiled and targeted the way that we are by YouTube. Lucky for me, I do this research out of passion. My channel isn't monetized anyways. Uh, the truth is my cause. Uh, money is secondary. Nevertheless, we need your support. The YouTube corporation is powerless without its viewers. You are the key. The power is still in the hands of the people as long as the internet is free. The truth will be our salvation. The resistance begins here, now. And if you too want to be part of the truth and disclosure movement, I invite you one by one to join our cause. Please hit that red subscribe button right now to join the resistance and support the revolution. We must get these truths in front of people so that they can see them for themselves. Uh, I also encourage you, if you like this video, please like it and share it so that we can get the truth out there. By the way things are shaping up, with as many UFOs as there are proliferating in our skies daily, something really big is about to happen. It's fixing to go down and government knows it. Government is preparing for it. Uh, it's time for us to prepare as well and is one. To get an idea about the scope of the problem for the governments around the world that are in charge of our security, let's examine a few of the technologies we reportedly harvested from the Roswell crash in 1947. Microchips, the transistor, integrated circuit and digital technology, which reduced the size of a calculator from an entire room full of hardware to something that costs $12 and fits in the palm of your hand. Night vision was harvested from the cybernetic biomechanical lens of the giant black eyes taken from the corpse of the first gray alien. Reportedly, these big black eyes are part of a body-shaped spacesuit, and they function as an auxiliary set of eyelids with many different filters and yet undiscovered photon-based enhancements. We developed bulletproof Kevlar from examining the skin-tight covering of the gray alien integrated spacesuit. We can also thank the grays for several other random inventions. Uh, these include the instant photo camera, the microwave oven, particle beam laser cutting technology, the hologram and holographics, the Ferrari. Uh, that actually was not alien technology, but it should be. And last but not least, the frisbee, which is probably more related to the shape of the UFOs themselves. Uh, 
This is what we were able to figure out and reverse engineer from the Roswell crash and others, and this was over 70 years ago. No wonder government is spooked. May 22, 2019. United States Department of Defense admits that a secret government initiative called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program has been pursuing research and investigation into unidentified aerial phenomena. And while the DOD says it shut down the AATIP in 2012, spokesman Christopher Sherwood acknowledges that the department still investigates claimed sightings of alien spacecraft. Alien spacecraft. Finally admitting that there is enough substance to the UFO phenomenon to spend American tax dollars actively investigating and researching it, as well as the reported incidences of alien spacecraft. But why shut it down in 2012? Most definitely not because of a lack of UFO activity. There has been more hardcore photographic evidence collected and put on display over the last two years than probably the sum of the last hundred years combined. Uh, this is simply because nowadays everyone has a camera on their cell phone and can quickly record the strange lights in the sky, publish them on the global stage via YouTube. Uh, all of this at the push of a button on a device that everyone cares with, carries with them everywhere in their pocket, their cell phone. My research indicates that there's a little more to it than just that. Uh, there has definitely also been a higher concentration of recent occurrences of UFOs and related phenomena, sort of quickening, if you will, as they are nearing a more final stage of their full-scale invasion plans. Consider the timeline. 2004, Mexican Air Force releases video of an encounter between Mexican, Mexican jets and UFOs. 2005, Brazil discloses its UFO files. 06, the United Kingdom releases their UFO files. 07, the French Space Agency uploads 50 years worth of X-Files. 07, Ireland releases its UFO files. November 9th, 07, Clinton Library releases its UFO files. December 18th, 07, Japan's top government spokesperson says, and I quote, UFOs definitely exist. 2008, the United Nations hold a meeting about UFOs. Then, on May 13th, 2008, the Vatican says it's okay for Catholics to believe in aliens because God made them too. Mm. October 20th, 2008, one of London's top gun pilots admits that he was ordered to shoot down a UFO over Norwich. In 2009, Denmark releases their UFO bombs. Then Russia, then Canada, then New Zealand in 2010. Finally, in April 2011, the perceived top dog of the international food chain, the United States of America, releases their declassified NSA and FBI UFO files. There may just be a pattern emerging here. If governments around the world have realized that the level of exotic technology exhibited by these alien craft is far beyond their ability to contain. There are many highly credible sources out there that claim that world governments have already made contact with these alien creatures and even formed trade agreements and technological exchange treaties. If this idea is so ridiculous, then why do its proponents keep mysteriously turning up dead, surrounded by highly suspicious staged suicide-like circumstances? My research is based both on evidence and personal experience, so I cannot personally attest to this myself, but it speaks volumes that any time an ex-government employee starts to get vocal about the secret government alien agenda and related cover-ups, they often end up dead or incarcerated, complete with their reputation and financial status totally destroyed. The last time the U.S. government officially admitted to any sort of engagement with a non-human intelligence was the press release of the Roswell UFO crash June 8, 1947, which they quickly recanted the next day. A lot of very interesting things happened in 1947. The Cold War began. The Doomsday Clock of the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists was introduced. Uh, U.S. President Harry S. Truman signed the National Security Act of 1947, creating the Central Intelligence Agency, Department of Defense, Air Force, Joint Chiefs of Staff, and the National Security Council. All deliberate steps in the direction of totalitarian dictatorship level control of the population. America was once heralded as the freest country in the world. As of September 2013, the wonderful U.S. of A makes up less than 5% of the world's population, yet it houses 22% of the world's inmates, giving the land of the free the highest incarceration rate in the world, with almost one out of every 100 Americans being locked up, myself included, from time to time. 
1947 also saw the establishment of the World Trade Organization and the creation of the Nation of Israel, finally giving a home to God's chosen people. Though previously discovered prior to 1947, in 1947 the Dead Sea Scrolls were released to the public, adding an extra dimension to the Bible and therefore altering the social narrative of its corresponding religious followers. This proved extremely threatening to the authority of the religious powers that be of the time, uh, taking even more power away from the church. 1947 marked the beginning of an exciting new age, the zeitgeist of which seemed to be analog of mind control and the manipulation of the fabric of society. 1947 brought with it an explosion of new technologies, even the first recorded use of the modern word computer in describing an electronic digital machine. 1947 was a special year indeed. Is it mere chance that the numbers 1947 or 194 and 7 equal the Illuminati signature number 13? 1 plus 9 minus 4 plus 7 equals 13. We know that American history has been heavily influenced by Freemasonry and other secret societies, and it continues to be intricately controlled today. Uh, 1947 was already the turning point in a time of huge social change. Was it all planned like clockwork? The UFO and alien activity too? Are these so-called unknown superiors of Freemasonry actually flesh, blood, and microchips gray aliens? Or are they an even fiercer, more dangerous, ethereal type of intelligence, like demons or jinn? Or are they blue beam esque fabricated pawns in the zero-sum chess game that the Illuminati leaders create to ensure the continuity of their own power and influence? What better way to control the narrative than to create the entire thing yourself from scratch? Either way, 1947 was a year of highly concentrated UFO and alien phenomena. Of course, there was Roswell. Everyone knows about Roswell. But also, on June 24, 1947, in Maury Island, Washington, informal harbor patrolman Harold Dahl and his supervisor Fred Chrisman saw and photographed six unidentified flying objects in Puget Sound. Dahl looked in the sky and saw six objects floating about 2,000 feet above his ship. The objects were made of some reflective metal, donut-shaped, and about 100 feet in diameter. The center holes were about 25 feet in diameter. Dahl said he also saw round portholes in what he thought was an observation window. The next morning, Dahl reported being threatened by strange-looking men with pale gray skin and no eyebrows dressed in all black. The first modern so-called men in black encounter. In fact, the two military intelligence officers assigned to investigate the Maury Island event mysteriously died in a tragic air crash before they could complete their investigation. All in all, there were over 300 UFO sightings reported in 1947. Even if some of it was staged in the interest of controlling the public mind, that was then. Here in the year 2019, the aliens are not only here proliferating in our skies, clear and apparent, but they are patrolling our skies, even in broad daylight, operating with total impunity. Our best weapon at this point Really, our only weapon right now is to watch and learn and try to understand them as much as, as much as we can. Knowing your enemy is key to any sort of asymmetric defense campaign. But for now, although I do sense it, I'm not 100% sure that these alien creatures are our primary threat. Uh, public enemy number one may in fact be the government itself. As it has grown beyond the scope of its responsibility in a truly free nation. I will continue to report on all of this as things unfold. Until next time, please remember to stay vigilant, keep your eyes to the skies, and enjoy the revolution on Resistance Radio TV with Chuck Blackman. Please don't forget to subscribe. I work really, really hard to bring you this material. Uh, I'm not sitting behind a desk. I am out in the cold and in the dark in the middle of nowhere at 3 o'clock in the morning videotaping the skies to bring you the truth. If you enjoy what I do, please like and share and definitely subscribe.